Now I want to illustrate a couple of useful uh, or a few useful library functions, uh, built-in functions that operate on arrays. And we'll go back to size as we as I introduce with vectors and we'll we'll check it how it works with arrays. So I come here, I define arrays A and B, and then I'm going to execute on line 10 the, the function size of A. And what it's going to come back with is it's really going to it's going to return a vector. So A is going to now, lowercase a is now going to be the vector 4, 3. It's going to give me the number of rows, then the number of columns. Always number of rows, then the number of columns. And so if you look over here in the workspace, a is a vector uh, with two values in it, 4 and 3. And so um, if I do the same thing for b, b comes back being the vector over here in the workspace uh, with 2 and 3 in it, which rows, then columns. And so you see here A has four rows, three columns, and B has two rows, three columns. All right, on line 12, if I set up the left-hand side and give it two values, I give it a vector, and I define two variables inside that vector, then what's going to happen is when size execute, it executes, it's going to put the number of rows in the first uh, variable and the number of columns in the second one. And so you see here A rows which variable A rows is four and variable A columns is three. Um, so that's another way to capture the size or the number of rows and columns in separate variables. You can do it in a vector as we did with lowercase a, lowercase b, or you can put variables inside of a vector on the left hand side and catch it with each individual variable as we did with A rows and A calls. And then same thing here when I did uh, B rows and B calls here with two and the three. Okay? Now, the one thing you don't want to do, and I did mention this when we talked about vectors, and is doing length with vectors is fine, but doing length with arrays winds up uh, somewhat troublesome. So if you do a length of array A, it returns a four. Uh, what happens is it returns the larger value of the rows and the columns. Um, and so when you do this, uh, recall A is a 4 by 3, so it's going to return the 4, which is the larger of the two. And then if you look here, um, when we do length B, it's going to return the number 3 because B is a 2 by 3, so it returns the larger, which works well when we do vectors because keep in mind with vectors, the row is always 1. And so and the columns is a number lar equal to or larger than 1, so it's always going to give you the correct length. But using uh, length with arrays is really not advised because you, you don't know really what you want to get unless you want uh, the larger number between the rows and the columns. Um, so um, let's move on and talk about uh, talk about sums and products and mean and, and averages. Let's comment this out, uh, terminate execution, and then we're going to uncomment these and look at these particular built-in functions. Um, and so I come down and let us define A and B once again. And we're going to look here at um, what sum does. So if you sum array B, it comes back with this, which is not the sum of everything in B. What it does is it sums each column. And so here you have the sum of the first column, which is 10, the sum of the second column, which is 9, and the sum of the third column, which is 16. If you want it to get the entire sum, what you have to do is on line 18, sum of B creates this vector, uh, which is the sum of each column. And then line 19, if you take the sum of what we did on line 18, so you take the sum of the sum of B, you will get the sum of the entire array. Okay. Same thing here with product. Um, on line 20, I get the product of each column of B. So I get 16, uh, 20, and 63. And then if I want the entire product, I take the product of the product um, there. And then the same thing with average. If I do this, I get the average of each column. Um, the average of 8 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 4 is 4.5. And 9 plus 7 is 8. Uh, so there's the averages of those columns, and if I want um, the average of the whole array, then I have to take the average of this vector here, and so I do that. So just keep in mind that when you do the sum 
or the product or the average, the mean of an array, um, you're getting the sum, the product, and the average of the columns first. And then if you want the whole thing, you have to do that on the that you have to do that operation again on the resulting uh, vector. So that's that's that one. Um, the next one, max and min, um, builds on the same idea. Uh, so let's let's look at this. Um, so if we rerun this step through, I define A and B. Okay, so now here, and this is worthwhile taking some time on. So if I do the max of B here, it's going to return me two vectors. Right? So if you look over here in the workspace, uh, vector rows and vector values, they're two different vectors, right? Which I put inside of this vector. So I know that max value returns two vectors. The first vector, uh, oh, I'm up here, wait a minute, I'm up here on line 26. The first vector it returns is values, right? Which are the maximum values in each column. The next are rows, which it tells me what row in each column that maximum value occurred on. So let's look here. Um, with the max of B, the maximum value in the first column is 8, and it, it occurred in row 2. The maximum value in the second column is 5, and it recur occurred on row 1. The maximum value in the third column is 9, and it occurred on row 2. So you get two pieces of information. Now, so that's how max works. Now, what if I wanted to know the maximum value of the entire array? Well, then I have to do a little bit more work. So what I do is I turn around and I look at this. So the maximum value of each column is in this vector values. So if I take the maximum of that, I will find the uh, maximum value of the entire um, array. So if I do that here on line 32, I get that the first parameter returned from max of values will be the maximum value in the entire array. The next is, so it tells me what column that maximum value occurred in. So the maximum value in this vector here was 9, and it occurred in the third column. Okay, so now if I wanted to know the coordinates of that maximum value, I know it's in the third column. Now I have to go back and access this one here, and so what I do is I do what I do is I take vector rows and I find the value in the column that is the maximum column, which is two, and so therefore now I know that the maximum value is nine. It occurred in column three and row two. Now this is a bit confusing. And um, so I'm going to go on the board here and go over it once again. Um, so let's say we have vector B, 2, 8, 5, 4, 7, and 9. Okay, and then I'm going to run, this is B, and then I'm going to run um, the code. equals max of B. Okay, so now what this is going to do is it's going to return two vectors. The first vector is values and that's going to have in it um, the maximum values from each column. So the maximum value in the first column is 8, second one is 5, third one is 9. Then it's going to return of vector, vector rows, which is going to tell you which row the maximum column occurred. So in the first one it's two, the second one it's one, and the third one is the second row. Okay. If I wanted to to find out what the maximum value total is in the vector, uh, excuse me, in the array, then I have to take this vector and take the max of that. So uh, if I go max value and then max column equals 
the max of values. So I take this vector, put it in here, and what it tells me is it's going to give me the max value equal to the maximum thing in this vector, which is going to be 9. And then it's going to tell me um, which column, because there's only one row here, it's going to tell me which column that maximum value occurred in, which is where, uh, which is going to be my overall maximum column. And that, excuse me, whoops, did that way. That's column is going to equal three. So I know my maximum value occurs in the third column. Now, if I want to know which row, I have to come back to my vector rows and find out what's in the third column. And so that's what this is. So I know my max row is going to equal my vector rows. Put that here. My vector rows indexed where my max column was, which in this case is 3. So rows indexed at 3 is going to give me where my max row is, and my max row is going to be the value 2. So I know my maximum is 9, and it occurs in B2, um, 2, comma 3. So that's how you go about finding the maximum value, which is here, value, and its location here which are the rows and the columns that we, we, we found there. So a um, little confusing, but very helpful um, exercise to figure out not just the maximum value in an array, but its location.